According to the media and mainstream medical doctors, going on a vegan diet is the best thing you can do to support cardiometabolic health. But a recently published study found that there's different concentrations of health-promoting omega-3 fatty acid metabolites in vegans versus omnivores, as well as changes in heart rate variability and the omega-3 index, as well as concentrations of pro-resolving mediators, which are key anti-inflammatory mediators that might help to reduce cardiometabolic health risk. So we're gonna talk about this study in greater detail. It didn't get a lot of media attention, but it's something you should be aware about. If you've been on a vegan diet for an extended period of time, you might want to consider testing your omega-3 index and possibly supporting your levels of omega-3s, specifically DHA as well as EPA, because the studies, this study actually compared vegans, and these are people that were on a vegan or vegetarian diet for more than two years compared to healthy people who are on an omnivorous diet for more than two years, and they found differences in heart rate variability as well as concentrations of EPA, DHA, and higher levels of linoleic acid in the vegan dieters. So it's important to recognize that low heart rate variability predicts sudden cardiac death. Long chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fat status is positively associated with heart rate variability. This cross-sectional study investigated where the vegans between the ages of 40 and 70 years old whose diets are naturally free of EPA and DHA have lower HRV compared with omnivores. Proportions of long-chain polyunsaturated omega-3 fats in both their blood cell as well as plasma fatty acid concentrations as well as plasma concentration of long-chain polyunsaturated omega-3 derived lipid mediators were significantly lower in vegans as well as daytime heart rate variability was actually lower in vegans compared to omnivores. So again, this is important because we hear that going on a plant-based diet is the best thing you can do for your health, but we're not hearing so much about the nuances and the considerations, especially if you've been vegan for an extended period of time. Now, where we're going to go in this conversation is first talk about the importance of heart rate variability, the importance of the omega-3 index, and then we're going to break down the key findings in the red blood cell fatty acid profile, as well as plasma fatty acid profile between the vegans and the omnivores. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that most vegans are consuming a higher amount of processed foods or uh, foods containing linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 derived oil, primarily derived from soy, from canola, from sunflower. Now, we know that the omega-6 linoleic acid actually inhibits con the conversion of ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, to help health-promoting EPA and DHA, which needless to say, DHA as well as EPA have anti-inflammatory effects and they are converted to pro-resolving mediators. And these are anti-inflammatory molecules that resolve inflammation. It's important to acknowledge in this study, they found that there were zero levels of the pro-resolving mediator metabolites in the vegan dieters compared to omnivores. Now, also the omega-3 index levels were less than half in the vegans compared to the omnivores. Now you might say, who cares about the omega-3 index, Mike? I don't know about that. I care about my cholesterol. Well, you really should care about your omega-3 index because scientific studies show that People with a low omega-3 index below 6% are at significantly higher risk of having a sudden cardiac event and all-cause mortality. We interviewed several years ago, Dr. Bill Harris. He's talked about this extensively. Dr. Peter Atia and many other folks have talked about the importance of the omega-3 index. So uh, there's a $49 test. We actually happen to sell this over at myoscience.com. I'm not promoting that. You can check that out if you're interested. I was personally interested and tested mine. It was about 7%. And that was not with supplementation of omega-3 fats, but I was unaware of the differences between an om om omnivorous diet and a vegan diet. And so if you've been a vegan for a long time, and especially if you're planning on having children or you're worried about your cardiometabolic health, you may want to consider testing your omega-3 index. And if it's under 6%, you should probably supplement or have more fatty fish, cold water fatty fish like wild caught salmon. Now, let's talk about the heart rate variability because there appears to be a link between omega-3 fatty acid status and heart rate variability. The scientists say vegans had higher overall HRV as measured by 24-hour standard deviation of the normal beat-to-beat -beat intervals here, known as the SDNN. Conversely, vegans presented with a decreased eight-hour daytime HRV, meaning that the, the vegans had slightly higher HRV over the 24-hour period, but for some reason during the day, the vegans had a lower HRV. Now, it's important to recognize that most cardiovascular events like having a heart attack or a myocardial infarction actually happen during the daytime in the early morning hours. So that is worth considering. Now, the, the scientists were curious to see if there was an association between omega-3 fatty acid status in the plasma and the red blood cell and its correlation with HRV. The scientists say vegans may have reduced availability of precursor molecules for pro-resolving lipid mediators. It remains to be determined whether there's a direct link with impaired cardiac function in populations with lower omega-3 fatty acid status. 
Now, here's why HRV matters. Low HRV or heart rate variability is associated with mortality after a myocardial infarction and increased risk of cardiac events in the general population. Associations between increased omega-3 fatty acid consumption and higher heart rate variability and lower heart rate suggest that populations with very low intake of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid status might be at greater risk for rhythmic events and sudden cardiac death. Now, let's talk about the fatty acid differences. I think this is really important to recognize. Again, I'll link that episode with Dr. Bill Harris. We also talked with his daughter who speaks extensively on the health benefits of DHA, which we're going to get into very soon. And this is particularly important for newborn mothers because we know that DHA from the maternal side is really important for the baby because it's transported through breast milk. And I'll share with you more details on that in a moment. The scientists say that low omega-3 index is linked with higher risk for sudden cardiac death and all-cause mortality. Diets high in linoleic acid. This is from mostly the industrial seed oils, cotton, canola. We know that sunflower oil as well as soy oil. And this decreases the conversion from alpha linolenic acid to EPA and DHA. So that is, if you're consuming a lot of industrial seed oils, that actually reduces the already low conversion from, say, flax or, or borage oil, even there's a little alpha linolenic and maybe uh, eggs and so forth, that there's a decreased conversion from ALA to EPA and DHA if you're consuming a lot of linoleic acid. And I'll share with you the profiles here soon. Vegans had significantly higher blood levels and, and red blood cell fatty acid levels of linoleic acid. The scientists say the main omega-3 polyunsaturated fat in vegan diets is alpha linolenic acid, known as 183N-3, derived from plant foods, particularly soy and seed oils such as canola oil. The omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids as a percentage of total fatty acid in blood fractions are, in vegans, only a third of the level in meat and fish eaters. So that's important to acknowledge. Here's yet another study. This was in the current opinion in clinical nutrition and metabolic care. The omega-3 index as a prognosis tool in cardiovascular disease. And what they say is that the omega-3 index was described as the sum total of EPA and DHA in red blood cells. And it's an index of coronary heart disease mortality. And this review really dives into the detail of details if you want to dive more into that. Another study published in 2019 in the journal Nutrients titled Alpha Linolenic Acid and Linoleic Fatty Acids in the Vegan Diet. Do they require dietary reference intake, adequate intake, special consideration? They say that vegan diets are high in alpha linolenic acid, which is an omega-3. People think it's health promoting, but again, the rates of conversion of ALA, alpha linolenic acid to EPA and DHA is between 4% in men up to 9% in women, which is further reduced the more linoleic acid you consume. So if you're having a lot of canola, a lot of sunflower, a lot of soy oil, that means that the omega-3s you're getting from ALA is being reduced. And, and we want those to be converted into EPA and DHA, particularly if you want to have children. So there's a lot of nutritional considerations if you're on a vegan diet, especially when it comes to if you're a vegan athlete, because one nutrient that is not found in plants is creatine. That's why at Myoscience, we have the creatine containing electrolyte sticks, which is the only product on the market featuring real salt, taurine creatine, as well as Albion chelated minerals. There's over 659 reviews over at myoscience.com for people like you who are trying to get more mileage from their exercise sessions, particularly in hot human environments. We know that creatine increases total body water and intracellular water. Water. When it's paired with electrolytes, it actually enhances the absorption. So this novel formulation can be used before your workouts or during your workouts to enhance exercise performance as well as hydration. You can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. Again, vegan and vegetarian diets are devoid of creatine as well as taurine. So you can help to support your athletic performance by checking out the electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. Now, going back to the details of the study, let's look at the fatty acid profiles and first talk about what the scientists hypothesize. The study aims to compare heart rate variability between vegans and omnivores matched for age, sex, BMI, and health status. And their primary hypothesis was that the vegans have higher heart rate variability and shorter interbeat intervals and lower HRV compared to omnivores. Now, it's important to recognize that you want a lower heart rate and a higher heart rate variability. I know that variability sounds a little wonky. We've done many videos on heart rate variability before and the benefits there. Marco Altini, we talked a lot about that. He has a great app if you want to get into heart rate 
rate variability testing. There's all sorts of technologies out there, low heart rate, high heart rate variability. So the HRV is a more, it's a reflection of your autonomic nervous system tone. Having a higher parasympathetic tone is favorable, it's adaptive, and you it's linked with a better, more resilient stress response. And so again, the scientists are trying to suss out whether or not the concentration of the omega-3 fats in the diet impacts HRV as well as cardiometabolic health. So what did the scientists find? They say in general, the lipid mediators derived from the polyunsaturated omega-6 fats and plant-derived omega-3 fats were higher in vegans compared with omnivores. And the mediators derived from the DHA and EPA were lower in vegans compared with omnivores, showing a clear difference in lipidomic profiles between the two groups. Here is the plasma fatty acid differences. This is just incredibly fascinating. I know there's a lot of numbers here. So let's focus on linoleic acid, EPA, and DHA. Then we're going to talk about the uh, red blood cell. Then we're going to talk about the changes in the pro-resolving mediators, which is really fascinating. SPMs and specific pro-resolving mediators and, and all the derivatives of DHA, the health-promoting DOCA, sahexanoic acid, the long-chain polyunsaturated omega-3 fat. Incredibly fascinating. There were zero levels in the vegans. And I'm not you know bashing on vegans. I think this is just something that most vegans are unaware of. They just focus on the big picture. They think, oh, plants are good, animals are bad. And they do not consider the nuances here, which is important to acknowledge. So let's look at linoleic acid. You see here, and this is just plasma as a percentage, the percent of linoleic acid in the omnivores was 27%. In contrast to the vegans, it was 33%. Now, remember, the more linoleic acid you have, that reduces the conversion of alpha linolenic to EPA DHA, which is not a good thing. Now, let's look at the EPA and DHA. What you see here are significant differences in both EPA and DHA in the plasma, but I really care more about the erythrocyte or the red blood cell. So let's look at the red blood cell levels of linoleic acid. Obviously, it's significantly higher in the vegans compared to the omnivores. And let's look at the EPA. The levels of EPA as a percentage in the red blood cell in omnivores is 1.26% compared to just 0.67% in the vegans. Now, what about the DHA? Now, we really we care about DHA because of all of the metabolites of DHA that resolve inflammation. So the levels of DHA, if you look at the omnivores, the levels of DHA are 2.62 and only 2.15 in the vegans. Now, why does that really matter? Because we know that the metabolites of DHA and EPA get metabolized into all of these pro-resolving metabolites, which are essentially there's a dearth of these in the vegan. Now, here's the figure we really care about because we want to reduce chronic inflammation. Now, comparing the levels of the pro-resolving mediator metabolites in the omnivores compared to the vegans, you can really start to see the differences here where the vegans had 0% of many key important pro-resolving mediator metabolites derived from both EPA and DHA. And so you can see here, I'm not going to name all these different uh, compounds because they get really jargonistic, but many of the important pro-resolving mediator metabolites are significantly lower in the vegans or completely absent in comparison to the omnivores, which I think is really important. So the scientists say, as expected, we observed marked differences in vegans and omnivores in their omega-3 fatty acid profile status as represented by their red blood cell fatty acid composition. These findings were supported by differences in the plasma fatty acid profile and self-reported dietary intake of polyunsaturated omega-3 fats. The average red blood cell omega-3 index in the omnivore group was lower than indices previously reported for meat and fish eating UK populations, but differences between the groups studied here were clear cut. Inverse relationships were observed for red blood cell linoleic acid and the ratios of linoleic acid to EPA DHA. This supports existing evidence that higher dietary intakes of linoleic acid, the omega-6 polyunsaturated PUFA, which is abundant in the omnivore diet, but even more so in the vegan vegetarian diet, and might inhibit the conversion of alpha linolenic acid to the health-promoting omega-3 polyunsaturated fats EPA and DHA. Now, when it comes to heart rate and heart rate variability, the scientists say that the daytime heart rate was higher and the beat to beat variability, also known as the heart rate, was shorter or lower in the vegans, even following adjustment for physical activity during the same eight hour period. These observations might indicate that a lower omega-3 fatty acid status could lead to either predominance of a sympathetic regulation or a greater withdrawal of parasympathetic nervous system activity, or possibly due to depletion of polyunsaturated omega-3 fats and cardiomyocyte membranes. There is greater 
overstimulation of pacemaker activity despite a normal sympathetic neural transmission during waking hours. So essentially what the scientists are talking about here is the changes in the key levels of these health-promoting omega-3 fatty acid metabolites might affect the heart and heart rate variability. Although the direction of causality is yet to be sussed out, that's important to acknowledge because we know that a higher omega-3 index is linked with lower incidence of fatal myocardial infarction. The scientists also say that notably in vegans, there were remarkably lower fasting plasma concentrations of HEPA, which is a really important anti-inflammatory pro-resolving mediator metabolite, and there were undetectable concentrations of multiple pro-resolving mediators derived from DHA, which is also important. They say, in summary, these data show that vegans have increased blood concentrations of linoleic acid compared to omnivores and are very low or undetectable concentrations of long-chain polyunsaturated omega-3 fats and these resolvents. So that's important to acknowledge if you're going on a vegan diet. If you've been on a vegan diet, especially if you want to have children or you're, you're worried about your mental health and cardiovascular health, at least consider having fatty fish and the min the bare minimum supplement with omega-3 fats. Consider testing your omega-3 index. I'll put links in the description below and a coupon code over at myoscience.com. This is what we offer through Omega Quant. This is a great test to do every couple of years to see if you're getting ample levels of the long chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fats that are known to be health promoting because they are metabolized into anti-inflammatory metabolites, which as this study found are undetectable in vegans. So that's important to acknowledge and really important for mothers to be and people who are trying to conceive children and reduce inflammation in their body. That's it for today, friends. Hopefully you found this information helpful. I will link this study and the other studies that we talked about in the description below. I appreciate you hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and sharing this video with someone who might find this information helpful. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.